I bet that outfit makes y'all feel like a big man, don't it? Well, I know, cause, well, I used to wear one back in the day. Pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty good. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is Galaxy News Radio coming at you live from the wasteland. It looks like the ghouls, raiders, and every other audience member is going wild over Amazon's Fallout series. It seems that Amazon finally got something right. This hasn't happened in Hollywood in quite some time. We know fans love it given all the positive YouTube reviews, and now Hollywood is completely confused. Exactly what is the industry saying about Fallout, and do they care about the fans? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into Fallout and explore the wasteland. It's no secret that major comic book movies have taken their last ride into the sunset after the disastrous year that was 2023, but many have wondered what Hollywood would go after next, as many have posited, including myself, they're going after video game adaptations. Now, I don't have to tell you that video game adaptations have had a very murky history throughout cinema. The 90s gave us such cult classic gems like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. But then we got disasters like the Super Mario Brothers movie starring Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. Goomba! Yeah, that totally didn't age well. But once the 2000s hit, new adaptations began to trickle in slowly, and as visual effects technology improved, so did the quality of the adaptations. For example, 2021's Mortal Kombat was actually pretty damn good. It wasn't campy like the 1995 one, it was dark, gritty, violent. Exactly what a Mortal Kombat movie should be. Then news came out that Fallout was going to receive the small screen treatment. Understandably, fans were apprehensive about having their beloved franchise fucked with by a bunch of talentless hacks. Fallout has been around since I was in high school back in 1997. Yeah, I'm that old. Get over it. In that nearly 30-year time span, it's had a lot of time to grow and mature. The lore expanded exponentially over the course of nearly a dozen games. It's grown a massive fan base over the years that is, shall we say, zealous to say the least? Adapting such a massive world with so much lore could pretty much only be done correctly on the small screen. The runtime limitations of the film format pretty much ruled out such a huge undertaking, but then the massive Amazon stepped in to give it a try. When the first teaser trailer dropped, many fans reacted positively. Those of us in the Fellowship and the 199 were understandably apprehensive. Modern Hollywood has fucked up so many projects over the course of the dark age of cinema that we were scared that Amazon would inject the message into it, but luckily they didn't. Unlike with other projects Hollywood has shat out over the last several years, Fallout didn't contain any infallible Mary Sue girl boss tropes, no identity politics or ideology with the exception of the androgynous thing that was the Dane character, which, you know, whatever. I'm willing to forgive them given how good the rest of the cast is. The story of the Fallout TV series is quite simple. It's a basic rehashing of Fallout 3 where the Vault Dweller goes off in search of her father. The other two characters they chose to feature in the cast are pretty interesting too. We have the ghoul played by the ever lovable Walton Goggins who serves as both a character in the series but also as a plot device that helps bridge the gap between the past and the present, and educate the audience on what led up to the War of 2077. Then we have Maximus, which serves as the audience's window into one of the franchise's biggest factions, the Brotherhood of Steel. What the show gets right, that the fans of the game like, was the lore. The showrunners go out of the way to please the fans, almost to the detriment of normie audiences. Fallout has a very deep and rich world full of lore that fans of the games have fallen in love with over decades. The show pretty much throws you straight into the action and you discover everything as the characters do. And now that I think about it, it's actually through the characters that you learn all about the lore. No character showcases the audience's ignorance 
more than Lucy McLean. She's this idealistic and naive vault dweller who's lived her entire life completely sheltered from the horrors unfolding outside. When she has to step outside into the real world, she's shocked at how different life is. In a lot of my videos, I keep harping on well-written female characters. The Critical Drinker and others have already mentioned Ripley and Sarah Connor, but I like to cite one that's more recent, namely Yellowstone's Beth Dutton. At first she's hard and bitter, but throughout careful exposition, you get to know how she got that way. In Fallout, we're given the same exposition with Lucy's character. She's naive, weak, and completely ignorant at first, but very slowly she learns how to survive in the wasteland. This is one of the many reasons fans who are starving for good TV and cinema like the show. The writing doesn't fall into the tropes we've seen over the past several years. Lucy is not a Mary Sue. Maximus is not the token black guy like Finn was. Using the ghoul as a plot device to learn more about the lore and history of the wasteland is yet another example of how good writing can be. Is the show perfect? Obviously not. There are some pacing issues and I found myself wanting to see more of the enemies from the games such as Super Mutants, Mire Lurks, Rad Scorpions, and Death Claws. Well, that last one we kind of got with that little teaser at the end of the season. Fallout didn't strike me as having had as big of a budget as Rings of Power. Perhaps Amazon was like, yo, you gotta make something good for less money because we got hosed with Rings of Power. So some of the effects weren't as high end as I would have expected, but that's okay. We got enough to whet our appetites and I for one am ready for more. But what do you guys think about all this? Were you surprised by how good Fallout was? And do you think Hollywood will learn from this? Please do let me know down below in the comments and as always hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.